Hello, welcome back to Mining in Darba 2024. My name is Ahmed, Senior Content Producer. Today, we have the pleasure of welcoming Karen Rathi, CEO of Chillerton, to our Voices of Disruption series. Karen, how are you? Very well, thank you for having me on, Ahmed, and uh, look forward to this in Darba 2024. Perfect, my pleasure. Uh, so, Karen, our first question is um, Chillerton. Four mining licenses in Zambia's rich copper belt. You know, it, you guys stand to establish a, a leading presence in the region. To kick us off, what was the process to identifying those opportunities? Okay, so Ahmed, our procedures are quite simple. We start off by looking at, I mean, it's it's I d typically four, four elements. Uh, one is jurisdiction. Zambia being, I think, one of the better jurisdictions in terms of mining. It's common law. It's a common law country and a very well-defined sort of Mines and Minerals Development Act. So that was that was the first and foremost. The second is obviously the geological endowment. All four of our uh, tenements, large-scale tenements, reside on the Zambian copper belt. So you've got 200 square kilometers uh, of copper mining where it's about 315 million tons contained resource. Um, the third is infrastructure. So uh, the Zambian copper belt has been uh, in commercial production since the 1920s. So you've got a very well defined sort of road system rail. You've got international airports um, as well as, um, of course, water and the most important is you've got hydroelectric power. So it's got a grid mix, 95% completely hydroelectric. So these are sort of the three key, key factors. And the fourth being, I think, the most important is the human resource. So you've got uh, availability of skilled and unskilled labor, as well as all ancillary businesses in the mining sector, such as drilling, you know, your mine, mine contractors, et cetera, et cetera. So, this is typically the the mix that we go for. Terrific. I mean, you mentioned the copper belt uh, in your in your answer. I want to I want to stay with that very quickly. So, Chillerton has made great strides in the pursuit of of green copper. Um, so you know, in mining within Zambia's copper belt. Um, First and foremost, if you wouldn't mind just dedicating very quickly to explain maybe to, to those who don't know what green copper is, but also if you can share the strategies and practices that have made Chilliton's operations more sustainable and environmentally friendly. Sure. So I think uh, th this is a fairly new concept, I think, in the mining world. And what we are pioneering in Zambia specifically is a product called green copper. This stems from the fact that Zambia's grid mix is 95% renewable, 90% hydroelectric, and out of that, 55% of the grid is used by the mining industry. So what we're trying to achieve here is that scope one and scope two of the mine cycle should be effectively carbon uh, neutral. Um, Chilliton specifically are bringing live in 2024 a Kokosa tailings project, and our entire fleet uh, for this project is going to be electric, um, as well as our leaching uh, facility will be drawing energy from the grid, which will also be renewable. So what we're trying to achieve is a very uh, a, a effectively a carbon capture within the mine cycle, and therefore creating a product that will be delivered to the end consumer, knowing that there hasn't been any hydrocarbons used to produce that ton of copper. Um, the, the, the whole sort of concept is in the infant stage, but I feel this is where the industry is going. And, you know, slowly you're going to have the OEMs uh, that are going to identify responsibly sourced and mined metals and critical metals versus you know, metals that are produced using hydrocarbons and and damaging to the environment. So absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I think it's 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 quite important when we're when we're mining a lot of these minerals in the name of 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 an energy transition that, you know, especially with commitments to net zero by twenty fifty and Africa's mining vision in twenty thirty, it kind of really fits in this. That's very interesting. Thank you. I, I want to stay with green copper 
for very quickly. Um, I think it's safe to say that that is quite a positively disruptive uh, approach to to kind of the extraction methods for 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 copper. Um, looking at that, um, what disruptive changes, if I can call them that, do you see as essential in the African mining industry to foster similar or even the growth of those sustainable mining practices? I think I think it's going to be absolutely critical for especially new deposits and new assets coming live. And I think the real advantage in Africa is that you've got a carte blanche uh, uh, canvas where you can put in systems where you have uh, you have cleaner, greener practices in the mine cycle. Um, unfortunately, with some of the larger mining operations that have been going for the last 20, 30 years, it's very difficult to correct the cycle. Uh, but I think going into this new decade or this new era of sustainability, uh, I think it's going to be green innovation, green technologies, in the mining sector that are going to disrupt. And I think that eventually there will be a certification process that will be implemented to really capture companies that are, you know, doing things uh, ethically, maybe spending more money, uh, spending more uh, uh, capital, uh, uh, putting in place systems and technologies up front. But I think that these companies will benefit down the line. Thank you. Yeah, I, uh, it's like I said, it's definitely one of those newer practices, but one that I think the industry can can take a lot from. Um, I want to, if you don't mind, quickly go back to something that you mentioned in the first question uh, in those four aspects, specifically the fourth one uh, around the, the, the skilled and unskilled labor. I think something that we can maybe coin as the, the, the human element. Um, Chilliton's made quite significant progress in in delivering local value you know doing my research for this interview um you know the work that you're doing with mother, the mother teresa foundation the partnership with the vatican there's a lot of positivity there um from your perspective uh, how do those partnerships you know how, how have they come to fruition and how do they uplift local communities okay so i think f for us our core uh our core sort of uh ethos is to shift away from uh, dependency on natural resources. So we are trying uh, to, to, in the communities that we work in, create skills and create opportunities for the communities where they're not as dependent on the mines. As we've seen historically, the, uh, you know, the commodity cycle is cyclical. You have uh, years where, you know, uh, prices of metals, specifically copper, are a buoyant, you have years where there's depression. And what we want to do is create operations where the communities aren't affected by the cyclical nature of the business. So we want to create skills and create opportunities that effectively uh, move away from the mining industry. We're putting a lot of focus on sport. Uh, you, you know, that's very close to, to me personally. And um, th these are elements where we, we really look to target in the communities we work in. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, very quickly, what's your uh, what's your football team then? <laughs> it's Chelsea. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but, th thank you, Karen. Look, my, my final question, um, and, and this has been very, very informative, so I appreciate very much uh, your insights. You know, everything that we've discussed today, I think it's safe to say that there's a lot of positivity um, around the work that's being done uh, by Chilliton in Zambia. And it's clearly that there's an opportunity, not just necessarily for, for, for you guys, but for, for all involved in that, in that um, ecosystem. With so much of that positive progress kind of being, un being undertaken, how is Chilliton leveraging its momentum to keep, to, to keep going, to continue that upward drive? Well, in terms of uh, in terms of our social responsibility, uh, 2024 is exciting. As I said, there's a lot of uh, uh, sports are very passionate to me. We're running a we're running a a, a boxing a boxing league between the mining companies. This nice. is going to be really interesting. <laughs> uh, in terms of the business aspect itself, I think that you know we are pacing ourselves 
with the development of our asset. One, uh, w one is to really put the right systems in place uh, in the foundation to build anything. You have to have a strong and solid foundation. Uh, and I feel that, you know, the mines that we develop, they, they, they last for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. And, and it's really critical that we, we build these mines looking forward. You know, we have we, we know today uh, that the environment is something that is uh, really near and dear to us. And it's it's really the future of our of the generations to come. And uh, to keep this momentum going, we're pushing very hard for our green copper initiative out of Zambia. And there's a lot more, uh, I think, to come. Amazing. Karen, thank you very much for your time. Um, sounds like there's a lot of things for us to be able to talk about at the Indaba, and, and I, for one, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to meeting you in person and welcoming you to Cape Town in February. So thank you very much for your time. Fantastic. Thank you.